to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Heat wave, Jabes. Be careful out there. It is intense. Europe is going through it right now. Oh, you know who's getting it the worst? Paris. <laughs> they are. Yeah. They are. <laughs> There's all these. Did you, wait, did you hear about this? Yes. Or? And on today's show, they're interviewing all these like girls that should be me in Paris. Like so I had to jump in the water. White, white blonde American White tourists blonde and, and, American and, and, rich and Paris. Yeah. tourists. Yeah. That are just going through it, right? <laughs> oh, I had to jump in the water. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I actually had to get wet in France. I have to just, she was like, I just need to be in water all day. The water's great there, by the way. Oh, you must go. Yeah, you, mu- you, you must really go. <laughs> you really must go. Manure is exploding in the fields <laughs> in Spain, by the way. That is, that is no lie. That is an actual... Headline for a news article that it is so hot, sure. shit is exploding over in Spain. Mm-hmm. Italy, it says they're on a. I guess they go by like a a, a warning system according to colors. Uh, heat wise. Yeah. Yeah. Is that universal or it's just over there? Red. I guess. I, yeah, I don't know. we do that. Yellow, red. I think, right? Yeah. We usually go by temperatures where it's like like when I when I wake up in the morning, I say, hey, it's gonna be ninety today. Right. I don't say, hey. It's going to be red today, so you should probably, you know, take off the sweatshirt. <laughs> stay in the water all day. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I just had to stay in the water all day in Paris. <laughs> We're not, we don't feel bad for you. It was just a weird piece to do on, like, the heat warning. Strange. Because, gosh, they were still having the time of their lives. Do you know what I'm saying? Were it they? didn't look dangerous at all. Okay. And they were trying to be like, danger, heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reaches dangerous, you know, levels. My thing is this. Like, I, look, I'm not a climate change denier. I'm not that guy, right? I, yeah, I, yeah. I believe that it is happening. Um, Science and stuff is all, like our All that shit. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You have, you know, countries like China and India and all this shit. Pollution is awful. Sure. I mean, every time you get on a flight to LA, there's a lot of, there's a huge portion of, and I don't know if China only flies through LA or San Francisco, mm-hmm. but I see a lot of Chinese, I mean, literal Chinese. I'm like, I'm not just saying that as a generalization, getting off flights with masks on all the time. And they're always wearing masks over their face. Right. And it's because over there you walk around. That's pretty much your day. If you're walking through the streets, they, they ask you to wear a mask and mm-hmm. there's levels that they report in the morning of like, Hey, you should put your mask on. Um, and now and they're they starting to throw the coins up into the, Yes. A good rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but they're starting to do it here now where it's like uh, Los Angeles, you know, that generic iPhone app that you get for the weather. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Los Angeles, they were like, hey, it's going to be really smoggy today because I'm still on the LA thing, obviously. Oh, okay. So, so they're and, get put adding that to the... It's, that's added. And then there's a, a quality of air Oh yeah. Uh, thing that is added to the bottom of like, hey, guys. The quality yeah. of air is not great right now in Los Angeles. And it's like, well, it's fucking Los Angeles. Like, Beto said it best, you know? Yeah. And a biblioteca and a bicicleta. And a, Escucha. Ayúdame. Escúchame. Chomping. <laughs> um, he did say it best. By the way, night two last night Ooh, of the Democratic Convention. That was fun. Only one person used Spanish. I think they learned their lesson from the night before. Sure. We made fun of that relentlessly. Who was Drake it? I think Rose it was one of the fake news. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was one of the moderators that was. Yeah. Said it to, to Pete, Mayor Pete. Yep. And uh, he was like, you know, gracias, whatever. It was just a small exchange. Not sure why he had to use Spanish with him only, but. I don't know. Like a, I, it's, it, look, after watching both nights now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two things are abundantly clear. They have their favorites. So the moderators have clear. their favorites. And clear. they're asking them way more questions than everybody else and follow-up questions, right? Yes. Um, and giving them time to respond and uh, not cutting them off and all this. Right. Whereas the other people, and look, maybe they shouldn't even get that, that, that woman. Who is the woman? Maybe they shouldn't give some of these people time to speak. 
Marianne Williamson, was that her name? When Dan texted you, yes, Danthony from the from our other show, yeah. When Danthony texted you, who is this crazy bitch? As she was talking, that really got me because it it was perfect, right? Because yeah. literally, as she's talking, he's texting you. Now, who the fuck is this crazy bitch? That was some of the craziest shit I've ever seen. So, what is your first? What is the first thing that you're gonna do in office? Go, 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 go! They're telling everybody. The climate first, change, immigration. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a call to New Zealand's prime minister, who thinks that they're gonna have the best, you know, education system. And I'm gonna say, girlfriend, yeah. you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> and I was covering my eyes, covering my face, just like. What is happening? Tell me when it Man, stops. It, it, it got out of control with her. I mean, she at the end of it, because you went in to bed with like maybe 15 minutes left, right? Yeah, I made it to like 11 I, people. Sorry. No, but I, look, I understand. It was, it was about 1045. It, it, it ended at 11. And I understand because the last 15 minutes, and here's why I bring this up. The last 15 minutes was just asking them what they would do and what their intentions were in office. Like one word, what their one hopes word, and dreams. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It, the debate was over at that point. It was kind of like saying, hey, this is what I believe. This is what I stand for. Good what's night, everybody. What's the last thing you want to say? What's your, but, what's your closing argument? Correct. 30 seconds, go. Hers was love. Making another call? Oh, nope. love. We should uh, really try to love one another more. And I think that's our biggest problem in the world. And, uh, oh. and that's what she would bring to the office is, uh, is more love. Oh, gosh, can you imagine that crazy bitch? Listen. Yeah. Clearly, we know from Trump that you can't get anything done anyways, no matter what you want to do. No. So throw her in there. Fun time. All it is is fun <laughs> times now, you guys. All it is is ratings and fun times and throw her in there. Yeah. You can't get anything done anyway, so don't worry. She's not going to, like, get anything passed. No. And so, so night one, I had, and, and again, this is purely my speculation on this. Right. I, I had winners night one. Um, I thought it was probably who, uh, that Julian Castro guy. Right. Who, who Which won. I was surprised that you picked him. Yeah, but it was. Uh, I, again, he was the only one who has worked in big government and tried to do shit. Yes. And, and understood the laws, at least. Like, yeah. Beto and those guys, he doesn't even know basic no, laws no, that no. are already on the books. No. So he's arguing against things that are already laws, right? Right. Um, and then Elizabeth Warren for being crazy as shit, but staying in her staying lane. Staying on topic. Yeah. Staying, staying on topic, and saying the same shit she's always not said. Not being canned, not being robotic, at least being passionate about the things that she really is passionate about. Yeah. Uh, so I would say, yeah, I would say Warren probably, and then, and but probably, they made and then, that happen. Well, well exactly. The and, moderators, then, and then probably Cory Booker, right? So oh, that's right. Sorry. Th those three, those, those are the three that I would move on if you're going to, sure. wh whatever the next debate is, or I don't know how they structure that of who gets cut and, and why. Right. I imagine part of it's funding or whatever. Last night, to me, it was pretty, pretty fucking easy. I thought Kamala Harris wiped the floor with... As much as we don't like her, guys, but... Because she's unlikable. You have to... She's, a sm she's incredibly smart, uh, well-spoken, but again, she has that unlikability factor of Hillary where... It's sort of this... Uh, it's this bitchy thing that girls do and everyone fucking hates it. Girls and guys and everything. This right. like, hey, as the only colored person on the, the day, you know, on the stage. <laughs> and this like weird thing of like, just talk. Yeah. Just talk. And she, um, she already won the night to me. So it was just like... There wasn't a need to be condescending at that point. Condescending. But that's what it is. But I did like how she mommed everybody. Like as soon as everyone she started, was she was like, listen, guys, yeah. nobody wants to hear this shit. And literally everyone shut up. So that is something that, you know, in a leader, she she showed what she would be like. And uh, I think that's the only thing you can do. Right. The, all you want to do is show what it would be like to have you in office. That's yeah. your one shot. This yep. is what I would do. This is how I would act. This is how I would look. This is how I would talk to people. Do you want me in there or not? And uh, in that sense, I do. Yeah, I do believe she won. I, I, uh, I, did, I did too. And I think it was pretty easy. I think Bernie looked fucking crazy. Um, and yeah. if, if it was a debate And he between... wouldn't answer questions. So unlike uh, Warren, he wouldn't answer the questions and really didn't have any idea of what he wanted to do. So... I think if you're saying you he, were he finally, saying if he, he they finally flipped. admitted that he, he was going to raise taxes on middle class. Right. Which yeah. was a big deal. And then after a rant, some about of the healthcare. gun laws that he had bitched about 
he had already fought against them in 2013. So it was just, uh, he got popped on that. To me, he got, he showed his ass. Uh, Biden, everybody went after Biden last night. Um, yeah. Either fair or unfair. They knew he was the front runner and leading in the polls and they went after him. And I think it was smart on Kamala Harris's part to do that because it separated her from the rest of the field by going after the contender one-on-one -on -one and asking direct questions to him. And I think because of her legal background, her strategy uh, for all of that was brilliant and nobody else did it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought the other guy who came out uh, pretty good out of that was Buttigieg. Um, I, don't, I still don't know enough about him, but from a, from a standpoint of, is he a likable candidate? Should he deserve to move on? Yes. The rest of that stage last night was pure chaos. And I, like, you know. You could throw him right in the trash. Yes. But, um, well, I don't know. Who was Guy all the way at the end? So my three from night one, oh, just to recap, Castro, Warren, and uh, uh, Booker. From last night, probably move Biden. Come on, we are Harris, just citizens watching this. We don't know anything about anything. One hundred percent. But, but just, I look at these. We're polls. normal people talking about yeah, politics. Yeah, 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 so here yeah. we go. But I look. At, I, but that's that's who's voting. So like I look I know, at these polls saying. of who won, right, or who they yep. think won, and a lot of people wanted that Andrew Yang guy to keep going and keep you know sharing his ideas. The problem is. His main idea is the only one he kept pushing. I would and he doesn't him, know anything on foreign policy. He doesn't know anything on anything. So it's like, uh, but he, he, is he the smartest guy in the room? You bet. I'd put him in tomorrow. Because he's Asian, dude. That's, you know. And he's younger and he's tech savvy. And look, giving it, everyone $1,000. What is it, a month? Well, because he's convinced the robots are taking over the world, which they probably are. I mean, they're already opening up what restaurants in New York. Shake Shack, I think. There's a Shake Shack that's fully God, talk about robotic now. You just go oh, and yeah. press the thing. Yeah. yeah, Little Caesars. I mean, Is I don't really? talk to. Yeah, you just you go You're in kidding. there, you press buttons on a thing, and it just comes through. No. a little window. Yeah. Is that real? Yeah. Fuck off. They're grooming. <laughs> they're grooming me. At Caesars, you know, I hate being groomed that by these things. Pizza <laughs> is always made with love. And but you won't see, you won't ever see or interact with the people making it, unfortunately. Which you know, I love those little little crackheads. Yeah. At our local, um, the uh, the best down by the college. The there? best. Yeah. And so I like to uh, chop it up with them a little bit when I go in there. But yeah, when I in there, I call it the meth I, shift, right? Because I usually go in after but they like, make long it flights. The best. I know. Because they care. Sure. Because they're so locked in on yep. whatever meth or drugs they're on. Right. I'm, I'm all for it because th those pizzas are amazing. Mm -hmm. You can't give a robot meth and make a great pizza, right? You can't give a robot mm -hmm. copious amounts of weed and have them give a shit about the extra pepperoni on there. Yeah, you can't replicate that. Like you can at a Little Caesars. Sure. And to me, I think that's something robots can't do, but if you're telling me they are, that disappoints me. How do you ask for extra cheese I don't think the robots then? are. I think they're, it's the grooming process. So it's the idea of just getting people used to not talking to people. So you uh, go in you, there. I yeah. can see them back there. Yeah. They're just not talking to me or looking okay. at me, right? So you just go in there. You go to this little thing. Yep. You press the buttons. I, and I, it, yeah. a person probably puts it in the hole, right? But I just don't. There doesn't. They're grooming me for not having any human interaction, which you know I hate. Yeah, same, same, same. I want to talk to a human and, and all that shit. But so that's what uh, Andrew Yang's whole campaign is which basically he's not on, wrong. About giving everybody so, $1,000 a month so you have money to live because most of these jobs will be eliminated in the next five to 10 years, including like truck drivers. You know, um, most of these cars are automated. Obviously, we've talked about this in the past. Once I was in my buddy's new Tesla going to Raleigh for that that oh, night God. we didn't look at the, the road once we didn't do anything and I was like what's to stop this in five years of you know us just sitting in the back seat doing nothing like oh yeah so uh we're, we're getting close to that so I understand what he's saying and he's trying to warn people for the future however if we went to war or had a tariff war with with another country I, Andrew Yang knows nothing about that um, they have enough people. Here's the thing. They do. You're right. Y Here's you're right. the thing about being the president, you guys. It's not <laughs> a dictatorship. It like up. it's not. It's really hard to fuck it up. Even Donald Trump is not really fucking it up. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If he's he not able it, to do anything. Do yeah. Like he's up there pissing people off, twe tweeting, you know, passing certain things that people like, whatever it may be. But he, you know, yeah. they can't get anything done.
you guys. It's the senators. It's the House. It's the Congress. It's the people around him. So, you know, same with Trump. If something happened, war. It's like he has enough people, checks and balances around him. You don't really need to this whole thing of like, he's the greatest threat. Look, he can't do anything. Right. Like I said, put the little author gal in there. She can't do anything. Don't no. worry. <laughs> it's your local government. I hate to be stupid about it, but vote for people that are like in your state. Yeah. In your local government. And that's what's going to affect your life. Like this, the president, you know, travels all over the place. People tell him what to do. He's shepherded around. Yeah. And that's it. I like Cuts how you said ribbons. shepherded. Like, like they have a There was a another staff, word I like wanted to. Staff what is it? Him, you know, they're holding Wrangled. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Sometimes, you know, words and stuff. I've never been called a wordsmith. That's for <laughs> sure. But I also wanted to talk about gala season, guys. Gala uh, season. <laughs> Everybody what, can relate, right? What is this? Gala season. It's yeah. when all the galas are. For? For whatever we whatever is hot and, and fun to to uh, donate to. Are you going to a gala? I'm going tonight? to a gala. Are tonight. you really? Mm-hmm. Come on, Javes. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually for Care C A R E of Wilmington. Okay. And uh, I think that stands for cats and rodents everywhere. Everywhere. So yeah. I am all about that. Sure. I want them everywhere. You bet you. No, do. it's coastal animal rescue effort. So tonight. Uh, our ticket donations and auction donations and all of that go to helping uh, animals in uh, animal rescue get medical help. So gotcha. whatever things they need, pills, medication, surgeries, Gotcha. this is what this money is going to. Okay. And then um, if I get drunk enough, I'm coming home with a cat <laughs> oh, fuck. in the back of the Uber. God. Can you imagine? No. Oh my God. Like, but again, if I was super rich and didn't give a fuck, like that Insta story would be awesome. Of you buying a cat? Oh, just of a bunch and getting them all into the Uber Uh, on the way home and a roadie too. Hey, I hope you don't mind. Yeah. God, if you came home with a cat, I would, I would go as soon as you black out at the house, I would go on your Instagram story (laughs) and just post a picture of me trying to suck my own dick because that's how much I hate cats. Calm down. <laughs> I mean, we were on a good little riff here, and then you're sucking a cat's dick. No, now, no, listen. I'm sucking my own because that at that and point, you're holding up the cat. Yep, and I've I've given up on life where it's just like, oh, this is my life now. Anyways, it's, it's that's, my cat, and I'm sucking my own dick. That's what I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm going to the beach, like oh. a white, like a white trash piece of shit. I'm going. Well, to, I'm uh, going basic white. I like girl. to drive on. I like to drive on to the beach. That does uh, sound fun, actually. It's a blast. I, we, I take the kids, and, uh, and that's it. We just hang out. We'll get you know fried chicken and just chill out, and Ugh, that's it. Sounds amazing. Yeah. When I signed up for this or said I would go, I did not actually realize exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. You know I don't love a rescue dog. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> no. Uh, I just, my whole thing is I don't really want to dress up that much. Uh, gotcha. And like be judged on my gala attire. Like, Is there going to be a- animals there? Yeah. There is. And Nick, uh, our friend Nick and Ashley, Ashley, I'm going with Ashley and Nick was like, if you come home with a dog, I'll chop its head off as soon as you, like that sure, same kind sure, of sure. thing, right? So you guys are real so the, the dogs animal that are lovers. Going are Our up. husbands are real animal lovers. Yeah. Uh, I, look, I do love animals. Um, we just, just, we have a young kid, so it's kind of hard right now. No, it's and it's I, essentially adding another child to the family. I, I love dogs. And love I dogs. actually think that you would do it over me. So like you would probably get a dog before I would at this point Correct. because of the kids. So yeah. you don't, ever have to worry about me coming home with a rodent so are these dogs up for adoption now yes oh they are okay gotcha the, they're gonna have some there but basically what the Better money for is adoption right yeah yeah but what the money is going for is to the animal rescue to the animals that are still in the you know what are they called uh rescue cages? facilities what are they so, humane society sorry i don't know so the ones that are still in the humane society that need medical help that shit costs money so that's what our money's going to. And then if you want to adopt a dog at this gala, um, fun f- at this fun-filled evening, yeah. 
with a DJ battle. I mean, is that is that the wait, is that somebody's name? Shit ever is going to happen tonight. <laughs> wait, is that a? And I did let me, not let me know ask what you it, this. Is that the DJ's name, or are two DJs battling? They're going to battle. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The DJs are going to battle. Food. Because DJ drinks. battle does sound like, oh, hey, that might be one singular person. Oh, DJ battle. It, it is. Really? Jamie, yes. I wanted, I wanted a battle. <laughs> Jamie, our producer to the rescue on that one. I was correct. Also, London Man, next to him like is flexing. shaking his head at me. Subscribe on YouTube. About so, what? It, DJ Battle? Oh, oh, it's a no Oh, man. We got a little controversy in here over DJ Battle. Oh, no. Okay. Subscribe to the YouTube show uh, right now because I'm going to flex on that, Javes. Okay. Food, drinks, and lots of laughs. And I just got the scoop on DJ Battle. So I will obviously be doing a bunch of Instagram stories Ooh. of him. <laughs> and... Uh, and then our friend is, so, and then it'll be a mom fashion show. Oh. I was not chosen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's all right with me, but my friend from the neighborhood was, and then a couple of other preschool moms that are hot. I wish this was a couch instead of a desk so we could just have you lay down and we could talk about these problems. Um. Does that enter your mind that you weren't chosen as a... Absolutely. <laughs> Would I do it? No. And maybe they know that about me, you know? <laughs> no, Ashley wasn't either. We don't know what the criteria was. Right. Uh, she's a redhead, so we can yeah. knock that. No, I'm joking. Wee. I love you. I'm j I love you. She's gorgeous, and she is actually like model body. So I think it's... We don't know what the criteria is. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And then my friends, here's another total white girl moment. So they're both, they both decided that they're going to wear jumpsuits. On stage? No, like just like, you know, girls ask, what are you going to wear? And what are, what are you wearing tonight? Yeah, both yeah. of us, So that we're not like, so we all kind of blend in. Oh, and boy. they're wearing jumpsuits. Nope. So you know what that nope. is, right? When yep. a gal wears. Can't even. And so I told them oh, on boy. the thread was like, you guys go ahead. If I put on a jumpsuit, I will look like a toddler with a glass of wine. <laughs> and so I'm not going to do that with you guys. Um, and wasn't picked to model. And so I'm going to just wear a dress, you know, Oof. just a normal I'm dress. I'm uncomfortable with all of this. Um, and I'm, what, I'm glad what are you I'm not going. What are you uncomfortable about, though? Are you uncomfortable for me? I'm glad... Look, as a, as a man and as a dad, I don't have to, to do any of this stuff. Right. Like go, go to any of this stuff. Because mm -hmm. I, I, like, as you're describing this nightmare, um, that, look, I, I would probably have every night uh, if this was my life. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think of what the opposite thing is for a dude, right? So as a, as a man slash dad, what the other thing is, because we don't have gala season. We don't have that. Right. Well, gala season is just everywhere, whether you choose to go. So there's a, a certain time uh, in the summer or whatever. Things are nice. They have a bunch of galas. Yep. Uh, I know this from Real Housewives. There's gala season. So <laughs> it's not a thing that you can have or not have. You can either go to the galas, which, by the way, the mom that was picked to model, not me, um, ha the, her husband has to go. Okay. So, so, so uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And he's going to be, oh, he's it's not just going to be, be him. It's all girls that Oof. are going to go. And then him and the other dads that their mom models are walking. I don't even know the level of drunk he would be at, or I would have to be at to sit through all of that. Um, well, we know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, jumpsuits and all that stuff. Like, again, that is, uh, that is way off the. Mm -hmm. Like there is, there is white and then there's beyond that. And sure. that is, you've, you've taken that leap. Um, and look, I know it. I'm just saying like, I'm just telling I, I you what kind of white shit I'm getting into tonight. I and, understand that. I can't, here's, so, so for and me. And it's cats and rodents everywhere yeah, is no, what it is. Of, of course, of course it is. <laughs> um, as a dude, there is nothing like that where, you know. Yes, there is. You there might. There has to be. No. Yes, I, look, there is. You might get invited over to somebody's house that, that likes a different team than yours in the fall where it's just like, oh, hey, we're raging for this team, whatever it is, right? right? And then you're like, eh, I don't like the fucking team, but I'll go and have some drinks. Whatever. That's pretty much the extent of it. The rest of the, the, the shit that guys do is dumb. Poker night or whatever it is, right? 
It's just, dumb poker night. No, but it's like dumb fun shit where you're yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, you're right, not great. having to dress up or whatever. whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not. Yeah. We're not raising money for shit. Um, okay. Well, I'm just letting you know. No, I know, I know, but uh, all boomerang for you guys tonight. I know you missed the boomerang last time. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, all yeah, boomerang. Yeah. Go to at Jesse Wiseman on Instagram. Uh, if you want a real, if you want a real exciting Instagram, <laughs> a real mom blog. Yeah, no. Uh, head on over there if you want a couple <laughs> pictures a year of like shit that I do when I get out of the house. Super you, fun. You don't post. You don't post at all. We've and already look, talked I, about why. I know. And I, I look, I love that about you. And day by day, I'm getting more and more jealous that you don't have to deal with anything social media wise. Like I like, but I like, like I like, I have more followers and I'm like, I want to give you something, but it's like. What do you want? Sushi? You have a lot, surprisingly. You have, Pictures you're of You're over sushi? like 10,000, I think, on Instagram, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm at 10.4. And you post like, you know, know, once every three years. So it makes me feel like, what if I did post? <laughs> right, right, right. I have what that What could much. my life become? Because I have friends that post literally every second, and they have 200 followers. Yeah. So it's like, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> but maybe I think that they would, I think that they would unfollow me, like, because my life's boring, you know, like I just don't, <laughs> I don't need an audience for everything. No. And, and again, I have an audience in the bathroom super, every day when I try and fucking, yeah, I need not, I don't need any more you have children. I have two it. children at my legs no, when I'm it. trying to pee. Yeah. I get it. So, uh, so I, again, I'm, I'm jealous that you have no responsibility social media wise because I, I wish I, I did. And that would be my dream. Okay. Um, and we have great people. Alec is over here. Uh, Alec does uh, cuts us some awesome videos and Thank all that God, shit. Thank God, because great. we wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, but then you know you deal with fucking comments and all that shit, where you're just like, oh God. Um, Don't worry about that. There are there are a lot of people it's not, it's not that. that like that like like to hear us talk. I don't know why, by the way. <laughs> Every day, and I have weird moments where I'm just like. Oh my God, who the fuck do I think I am? Like, why am I talking? Just, you are sitting there listening to me talk about such dumb shit. Yeah. And you're like messaging me that you liked it. See, like, it's crazy. So those are the people that fucking matter. Yeah, These yeah, people yeah. that are pissed for whatever fucking reason because two dumbasses or whatever are not on here. Like, I, we don't care about that. No, no, no. The, the, uh, the hardest thing about it, I think, is when you get to this many millions of there's always going to be hate, you can't please anybody haters you can't please everybody is, is what i should say you can't please everybody but I the mean, most important thing is to just please the people that are down down since day one down yeah. for the cause and like that's all we fucking because i think about. between the two shows this will be the first month that we cross seven million listeners which is crazy when the population like, like what are you doing you guys <laughs> people do you hear what i was just talking about like go and it's okay you guys if you want to go like i get it just joking. <laughs> Don't unsubscribe, please. But what is it? I was thinking about it. What is podcast? People like, what say, do I love? Here's the thing. People say you're relatable. I know what it is, actually. I know this. I know the secret behind podcasts. And I Me too. But I'm just saying. Like, you know, it's not a secret, really. It's the fact that here's where it all turned for me, right? Probably three or four years ago. I didn't trust any of the news that I was listening to or, or I didn't really like it, right? So it's, you take CNN. I hate, I hate all those fucking people. I hate what they have to say. Fox, basically the same way, um, where it's just like, man, you're coming at everything from a direct angle, left or right or whatever. I don't really want to fucking hear it because that's what your ratings depend on, right? Podcasts, those are just real people talking about cool shit, same that we are, and it's our own opinion on things. We're not beholden to a Fox or a CNN or whatever. So I don't have we're to lie. We're allowed to just talk about. Yeah. I don't have to lie and tell you things. That but it's also just like, like we're not experts on anything. We're just like normal people. So that's always crazy to me. But my favorite part. Pod- yeah, <laughs> sure. Sure. On what? Give me two things. So sports. Sports. And, and penises. And yep. so, um, dick pics. Dick pics, obviously, are a. Sports and dick you pics. You are a master at picking really funny dick pics to send to your friends. So that could be your expertise. Thank you. Thank and you you're very welcome. Much. But my favorite podcasts are the same thing. I just, it's almost just like eavesdropping on somebody else's conversation. And every once in a while, I'll get something out of it that's like, oh, me too. 
And it makes you feel like, all right, I we're value- in this together. Move on. Now I can like do my day or whatever. I value their opinions more than I value the people on TV, which is why yes. I listen to podcasts. No matter who they are, the whether comedians or totally just whoever. Totally. I'm like, just another person being like, this shit is fucked up, right? Is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then you can move on. Yeah. Uh, and I am an expert in sports, by the way. Um, really, I mean, 74% last year. Watching them. No. Picking Playing the, them? Picking the, picking the winners. So we do spreads on Drinking Bros yes. Sports no, every Wednesday. Uh, right now we're in a down season of uh, sports, right? Because the NBA Finals just ended. NHL Finals just ended. You're in the middle of baseball season. And I, we, we always tell the listeners, don't bet on baseball. You're a fucking junkie if you do that. Um, because every night. Unless you're an algorithm master, but yeah. Even then, you have to bet every single game. Yeah. So, and that's why I tell people, look, if you are an al- algorithm master, that's great. But there's 162 games, and you have to bet all of them to oh, beat the algorithm. Oh, there's only a few people that can do it. Right. Like, in the so it, it, for most every Tom, Dick, and Bob, like, don't do it, right? Sure. Um, but I also said, hey, man, gambling is, is becoming bigger and bigger. Next to podcasting, it's probably the biggest upcoming industry. And today... Uh, cause they look, the only reason why we did the sports show was we got bought out by, uh, by a betting company, mybookie.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were on the show last year. They're doing the show this year and we gamble with them. They're great. Yeah. Um, we gamble with them and it is solely because the Supreme court passed a law last summer that said sports gambling is now legalized in 50 States. So we hooked up with them. I said at that time, a year ago, once this takes off and goes state by state, it's going to be massive. And it's not going to be just Vegas anymore. Today, that came true. Uh, New Jersey just passed uh, Las Vegas. They just passed Nevada for the highest gambling states in the United States. So wait, sorry. New Jersey just passed? Nevada. Nevada. Okay. Yep. Uh, which is crazy to me. Because um, that's what happened with all of those casinos in Atlantic City. They were fighting for years and years and years to oh, try to get true, sports huh? gambling in there saying, look, yeah, the yeah, reason yeah. why... AC isn't as cool as Vegas and everybody's going to Vegas is simply because you don't have the same amount of options to bet. Mm -hmm. Therefore, all those casinos were going down. Trump had two or three go down for like bankruptcies and shit like that. You didn't have enough options. And it was like, man, I can fly to Vegas and bet on games every fucking day of the year. Yeah. Now that they've opened that up, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a revitalization in Atlantic City. Because now if you can bet in there, Look, man. that could be fun, dude. I mean, I used to I used go there to, as a kid. Same. I used to go there as a kid, yeah. If it was just a little bit less dangerous, I would still go there. Yeah. Um, a little bit more uh, built back up, but because I loved it. Boardwalk, like, I did. I had to go back, as you know. Oh, d- yeah. In uh, 2010. Don't do that. To, uh, to settle some things up. Don't uh, do that. <laughs> I'm going to say what it was. It was yeah, it's super personal, but um, yeah, you know why I had to go back to Atlantic City. Settle some things up, super personal. I think you've talked about it on the show, but that's okay. Have I? I think so. I, I don't know if I have, actually. And like finding the ticket and stuff? I, 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 don't, know if I, I don't know if I have I actually talked about it on this show. Well, fuck it. Uh, father passed away in New Jersey in Atlantic City, so uh, yeah, that, that's what that it was. Has- There's a crazy story behind it, which I want to save... I'm not, it's not that I'm being super secretive to you guys at home or anything else. I actually want to save this for Burt Kreischer's show. Um, oh, okay. Because I owe his wife, Burt Kreischer's, uh, when I went, we, I met him in LA. He was one of my very first friends when I moved there. On um, his podcast or him on here? Uh, either way. Okay. His, his wife's also got a podcast um, called Wife of the Party, which is a great name. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it. Nailed it. And right? it's just her? I think so, yeah. And she interviews people, right? Either way, I want to save this story for them because when this all happened, the story was so crazy that uh, she was my uh, landlord at the, my, my building in LA. And it was, okay. I was living in this super nice building at the time, but I had to go to court and do all this crazy shit back and forth to New Jersey. And because I was living in this unbelievably nice place in LA, there was a lot of money left over on that lease that I was like, hey, can you cut me a deal on this? Can, we, can you help me out? And uh, she did. And she helped me get out of this contract. And yeah, uh, you owe her. I owe her a lot. But they have no idea about this story. And I was unable to tell her because I had to fly out and go mm. to Atlantic City to deal with, with all of this court stuff, right? right? Um, but I owe her an immense 
debt of gratitude. Damn, and and the story's so wild that I, I literally want to save it for their show and say thank you to them face to face. Because I, I, I don't like on other people's shows where they're telling stories or whatever. And it's just like, hey, man, just go to the source and tell those people. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always that dude who would rather pick up the phone and call somebody rather than text or tell a story, like, you know, behind them, like, hey, man, here, here's what's going on. And uh, that one I'd, I'd love to save for, for their show. So I just can't get over Wife of the Party. And that's a great title. Damn it. I know. You had a good one for one you were working on for uh, potentially for a while that I really liked. What? Uh, two blondes walk into a pod. Oh, yeah, 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 something like that. I like two that. Blonde, I, I like that one a lot. Two blondes, one pod. The wife of the party is great. Two um, blondes, one Because Bert's mic. Bert's Bert is the party. Everywhere that guy goes, he's a party. Ugh. And he told the story Brilliant. on his show about when we got in a fight with uh, Devin Sawa. That's right. At, at that club in yeah, LA. Yeah, you guys need to chop it up a little bit. Whether it's like a phone call or the something. The problem but... with Bert is he's so busy. So busy. That and if you don't doing... catch him in another city, uh, it's tough to tie these people down. So like, I love Bert. He's, he's great. He's yeah. the best. But in good, and I, I am amped for his success because he is a stand-up comedian at heart. But right now he is on an intense tour around the world for like two years, something crazy like that. Um, and, you know, you can never pair up those dates. Even with Dan Cummins, who's one of my favorites, you know, and I love his show, Time Suck. Like, I had to wait till he came here and then drive out to see him to do the show. That was such a good show. It was the best. And, and I remember when I, you and I were talking about it, I was like, hey, I got to go do this interview. And they were like, I, I don't understand why he just won't come on. I was like, dude, stand up. that stand-up life is brutal. Yeah. So it's like, dude, you're gone. Even talking to Dan, I mean, he missed... What, what did he say is his uh, son's fifth grade graduation? Yeah. He had a really funny story about it. He's like, look, it's fifth grade. You're supposed to graduate fifth grade. If oh, you yeah. don't, then you're a fucking idiot. Um, it, it, and he, I did like how he was like, my wife's very supportive about it. And she's pretty funny about him having to leave. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, at the end of all of this, I would love to share this story about, about Atlantic City. And uh, also because of our gambling show, I have a feeling now with the revitalization of it, we will be back there to do events. Um, because Vegas just got a football team. They got a hockey team. If the revenue and all that other shit is the same for Atlantic City and they keep growing like this, I have a feeling they will get something there. Um, and it'll be rad again sports-wise. There there's a horse track out there. We used to go to um, when I was we a kid all the time. We love to play the ponies. The ponies. Um, and that was always fun, and that's still open. Uh, so I, I wonder. I wonder what will happen with, with all of that. But just seeing these numbers was encouraging because it's good for states. Yeah. Once they start opening this up in every state, uh, it's good for – I think most of the money goes to, like, education and shit like that. So it's like – Yeah, it has to. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going to be a gambling junkie, at least have it go to a good place. Right. Uh, and know that we all are as dudes. That's what we have here. I think we have the education lottery. Oh, is that what? Yeah, that's North right. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, for uh, what is it? Powerball or? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah. Uh, man, we just keep rambling on and not, have not gotten the sponsors. I want to do a full show where we just do the sponsors at the end where it's just like, oh, shit. We just did an oh, entire. Whoops. I don't know if they would be into that. But... I don't know. Maybe they would. I think that I think we we put them in the best spot possible every show. H Factor, by the them. way, is not a sponsor, but they mm -mm. they should be. We just love their products. I think we're secretly hoping that they'll be a sponsor one day. So we're like, hey man, this yeah. is the best. They're so. too busy blowing up. So I know they're great. We'll see. But uh, no, one of our buddies owns the company, so we kind of we kind of try to press them as much as we can because we love it. Um, we also love GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros because they're a real sponsor. We love them more. Ooh. <laughs> they're the best sponsor um, they are you hear that age factor no best um, product uh, getting our neighborhood taken everybody, care everybody's, of everybody's ordering from our neighborhood which is kind of awesome I think is, partly because yeah. they're like you know oh they hear us talking about it all the time but they've been to our house and everybody's been on those beds it's like dude yeah. I'm on one of those fucking beds yeah and it was like hey it's ghost bed and it's, it's one of those things where my parents where, anyone that stayed on them is like all right I'll, yeah, I'll and, and we're lucky enough to have shows this big, like we were talking about earlier, where you have huge sponsors like Ghostbed, where it's just like, oh shit, like those mattresses are crazy. 
crazy amazing. Like, yep. how is that possible? Great I feel price. like with Ghostbed being a sponsor and like Raycon and all those guys, like, it, it, finally it makes the turn with your friends where you're like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you're doing like real big boy shit. And you're yeah, like, yeah, because they're like, oh, I saw. Go it won't. It won't be until they're like, oh, I saw Ghostbed like pop up on Instagram. Yes. Like I saw a yeah. thing. Like that's a real thing. I was like, yes. Yeah. We're all a real thing. Yeah, and they're look. They're our chief sponsor for the, the next year, so we're amped to have them on both this show and Drinking Bros podcast. If you're military or first responder, you get fifteen percent off forever on all their products. Also, it's Fourth of July week right now, so they've got some monster deals on the sites: beds, mattresses, oh, right. uh, the adjustable bases, the sheets, everything. And they got that wheel going, the uh, the spin wheel. Kind of looks like Wheel of Fortune. It's you can land on fun. something and get something else for free. Yeah, um, those guys are always giving away free shit too, which is amazing. Gigantic fan of ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Go there today for all your mattress needs and or pillows. Pillows are amazing. Uh, next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Strikeforce. Well, it's the taste of freedom is what it is. Four amazing flavors. Uh, orange. Original. Lemon. Grape. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. I, I like reading um, we have a Fourth of July uh, party. We do with our children, so the strike force is going to have to be in the vodka. Yeah. Doo -doo. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. yeah. Uh, super amped uh, that we've been with these guys for fuck man three years. I think it's been a long time. Either way, the only reason that they're on the show for three years is because you guys love them. They're doing well, and we love them. So it's yeah, easy to promote they're blowing this shit because I don't like, yeah, they're in t over 2000 stores now. What, 2007 or something crazy like that. Uh, they ship everywhere in the entire world and they also have a subscription of the month. No carbs or sugars too in this, which is the key. Uh, so you don't get bloated off like Monster and all that other bullshit. Um, go to strikeforceenergy.com, type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Last but not least, this is what you came for. Talking about straightrazors.com. Put them back on. No, I'm joking. Put the <laughs> earphones back on, Jamie. Joking. <laughs> um, ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right? Oh, 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 oh. You got a little honey in that voice. Do it tonight at that gala. Oh, Just should I? Scream that out. Uh, during the show and see oh, what happens. See what happens. Yep. See how quickly I get kicked out. I'm taking the cat with me. <laughs> I'm taking a cat, you fuckers. Maybe I should do just do something like that. Give it a Instead go. Instead of just trying to stay, you know, under the radar yeah, with the gals, go. I'll try and stand out. In a bunch of different ways. Give it a real strong go. Uh, go to straightrazors.com for all your shaving needs. They are fucking doing it right, doing it tight, doing it all night. <laughs> um, they look, they keep me looking like this, which is crazy. I shouldn't. So crazy. I shouldn't look this. Yeah. I should have five o'clock shadow at some point, right? Right. Razors, bro. Razors. It takes about a day and a half off your shaving. If you're worried about using a safety razor, they got straight razors. And if you were a terrible son, buy them for your father or... Any pregnant woman nope. under their third trimester. Don't. Great for shaving bushes. Don't. Uh, straightrazors.com. We'll hook it up. Revolution, 20% off. That is a big savings there. And uh, thank you for my service, my new book uh, that I wrote with, with uh, Matt about his life uh, and his career, which is uh, incredible, is now on pre-sale. Go to thankyformyservice.com. Matt is signing them up until June 15th. Go and order them. Through there. And the hardback, you guys. Hardback will get us to the New York Times bestseller And list. what are we trying to do? We're trying to knock Michelle Obama off? Correct. So, hardback, you're going to do that, guys. Yep. Up to you. Yep. So, go there. Learn it, live it, love it um, while you can. Uh, copies are selling a lot. That's why they put a due date on it. So, uh, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. Um, we shall see. What's yeah. that, what else is uh, going on? A lot. There's, man, there's, it's tons, man. Um, you always wonder who the big artist is dropping shit over the summer. Mm -hmm. like every summer. Like last year was the summer of Kanye, I felt like, right? Right. He put out five albums. It was oh, yeah, yeah. Push a T, which was that and Beer Bongs and Bentley was my favorite albums of last year. Um, he put out uh, Kid See Ghost, which love Kid Cudi. Yes. I uh, love that album as well. 
And, uh, and then Drake, he put out Tiana and uh, one more. I forget who it was. Nas. Um, and then after that, Drake came out with his Scorpion album. Mm-hmm. So you're like, who is it? Who's dropping the summer banger? And they're doing it out of nowhere these days where you're like, all right. No fanfare, just dropping it. Dropping it at midnight and then seeing what happens. It was Chris Brown last night. Um, he dropped a fucking double album. Really? Yeah. So I haven't heard it yet. And I know I'm going to get a bunch of messages. I'll give it a listen uh, over the next week and then get back to you on it. But uh, yeah, boom, Midnight just dropped a fucking double album on people. Jeez. That's big boy shit these days. Drake, sure. Drake dropped a double album last year. Um, but that's hard, man. That's How many songs is that? 32, like, it says. Jesus Christ. That's a lot. Um, that's saying, fuck you, I don't really care. That's so a everybody's lot of trying Chris to digest Brown. it right now online. Because we tape these Monday sh- shows on Friday. So that way, Jabes can go to all of her galas. Um, <laughs> Gala season, guys. That she gets invited to. <laughs> Not to model, just to sit there. But uh, yeah, before before you send anything in, uh, know that this is taped on Friday. So this just dropped. And uh, 32 tracks. Lil Wayne's on there. There's a bunch of people on there. So I'm amped to give that a listen. So we need some fucking bangers for the summer. Right. Something that slaps. Dude, we got nothing right now. We got nothing. Uh, the other thing I want to chat about was uh, they're bringing Ghostbusters back. Again? Yeah. With okay. dudes. Okay. I'm in. Are you? <laughs> a lot more than the last one. What is it? Who so is it? We, we were chatting about this, Dan and I, last night. And we were like, oh, God. Because I just saw the headline, right? Ghostbusters is coming back. They're going to shoot a new Ghostbusters. It's Jason Reitman, who is Ivan Reitman's son. He's a great director. Okay. He's done a million things. Mm-hmm. Uh, up in the air, the George Clooney movie. He's what? Directing? Yes. Okay. He's directing. And the first person to sign on was Paul Rudd. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I can I, do that. I, I think That's with alone. Paul Rudd, I think we're in. And he would be what? The Ackroyd or the Murray? I'm not sure. Yeah. He could kind of go back and forth. Or... Ackroyd's still alive. No, I mean, but in the... Well, I'd he's love not... to see Ackroyd. Bring, bring back oh. Ackroyd. Oh. Why? Okay. He was on SNL a couple of years. He looked fine. Yeah. He's still funny? Yeah. He's doing the vodka company. Yes. The, uh, He's very into that. Crystal Skull. Um, Murray's still alive, too. Yeah. If he came back, I would He's definitely. Down in, He's down in Charleston right now. Yes. He lives there. Yeah, because he's not an idiot. Everyone should fucking live there. It's great, isn't it? Yep. Wilmington, Charleston, like, I get it. Danny McBride's Charleston's just, it's like Wilmington, but with way better food. Yes. Uh, but the only, the, what I will say, though, is getting to that beach is really hard. If it's all right. There's over too the much bridge. sand at the beach anyways. <laughs> I just need to be in the restaurants. <laughs> and I need to be able to like peek and maybe see water. That's it. Okay. That's all I need. I, I, I need you to know that I can get to You love to get, get to sand everywhere. But and I'll tell I you don't. why. In LA, I lived, what, 12 miles from the beach? And you're like, oh man, it's super close. I'm making way out of time. No, because the traffic, it was like an hour and 40 minutes. Therefore, there was, I think there was two years in a row. I think it would be faster to fly to Wilmington than L.A. <laughs> yeah. In L.A. And go to the beach, yeah. Then, go, then drive on the 405 to the beach, probably. Yeah, it's about four hours. So the depressing part of me was like, man, I looked back on it um, because, you know, I was writing so much and doing all this shit. There was two full years in L.A. where I never saw the beach and I lived 12 miles away. And that was what was depressing to me. Well, I grew up. On the beach. Yes, you did. And I didn't ever really go that uh, much. But here's the thing. I, for your, where you live, that, that you drive out. pop over. Yeah, and you're also driving along the beach every day to yes. get to where you need to go. Yes. So you at least get to see it. I didn't even get to see it. No, I was 12 miles away. And I remember when it kicked in, I was at a, some bullshit party in the hills. And um, uh, I remember I was like, oh, man, this is an amazing view. Is that the ocean? They were like, yeah, yeah, you can see it. On a non-smoggy day. And I was like, fuck. I haven't seen it in two years. Is that the ocean? Yeah. Loser. Total, totally depressing. Like, <laughs> hey, I guys. I seen it in two years. This is such a great place. Is that the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> Ross, get out of here. Dead serious. Can someone get Ross out of the party? I looked at Security? it and I was like, maybe it's an illusion. And I was like, there's no way. Because the house was probably, I don't know, two minutes from where I lived up the, up the hill. And sure. I was like, oh, wait. Fuck. Hey, guys. Is that the ocean? Hey. Yeah. Hey. So that's why, um, if I'm going to live oh, in a city. Oh, yeah, I know. City, I knew. I knew it was. Yeah. Oh, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to live in a city where there is a beach, I want to go. I want to be able to go. Whereas when we were in Charleston, 
the last time we went, it was about 45 minutes over that bridge. And then. Yeah, but it depends with, on where you live, right? Do you remember that? You were, you were pregnant, I think. Yeah. And I was going to do some, I used to uh, work in, I used to be a cosmetologist, I guess. Right. So I would yeah, do yeah. all different things, eyelashes, hair, blah, blah, blah. So I was, you have to continue your education and go to all these fucking things. Basically right. seminars. Yeah. So I was and doing teach an you how to eyelash. Do but we went there. down to Folly Beach yep. one day because there was this Mexican joint that I liked down there. And even though we were only staying for a couple of days, a golf cart pulled out in front of us. Do you remember that fat white dude who just, just stopped right in front of the car, jammed on the brakes, and then just, just vomited all over the street. And then he just hit the gas and then kept on driving. And I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> Do I remember that? <laughs> Man. And that was the best memory I had of Folly Beach. Sure. And I asked somebody, I was like, at the, it's wh- fun. Though. What was the name of that taco place? It was Taco Something, like something easy. Oh, uh, Taco, Taco, Bean Taco. Yeah, something, something, Just something really like that. cool. Yeah, like Taco bean, Town. Bean Taco. And I asked them, I was like, hey, Meat. man, is yeah. that what this is like all the yeah. time? And they were like, oh, yeah, people get I fucking house. So did I. I liked it. It wasn't a kid's beach for sure. It was definitely a party beach, which... It isn't. And here's the thing. I liked it a lot yeah. if you lived down there. Down there. So yeah. if I lived or down there... Or at least there, a little bit closer. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be rad. But the city is over the bridge and in the town. Sure. And that's what you liked. Yes. So then we would be buttonheads. Look, if New York is not going to work out second half, I would do a little... Uh, Charleston? Haci- Hacienda. Oh, oh, down in Charleston? In, in Charleston, yeah, yeah, yeah. Closer to Folly Beach, maybe. I mean, I'd have to check it out, but... No, of course, uh, obviously. We don't, we don't want to do anything without you checking I mean, out. I don't want to buy anything as sight unseen, you know. <laughs> but I want to be in Moo. I want to have big rings. I want to have martini glasses. Yeah, you want, to, you want to live the full life. Pills. Yep. Yeah, all of it. So I think that's how it should be, though, when you yeah. retire and that's it. Like, hey, cool. Dude. It's got So we'll see. I'm down with Charleston. Like, Charleston's rad. We could party there. I can get down on there. The food, like, it, for all we want in New York anyways, is just like the food and going out scene, right? Yeah. Charleston. No, for Bill real. Murray sighting. And because a lot of people move to Florida. And I don't get it. Mm-mm. I don't get it. Like, Miami, I enjoy for about three days. And that's about it. Right. Uh, one of my best, Matt is there right now uh, with his wife on vacation. He sent me a, a picture this morning. He was just like, man, look at this. I was like, man, that's amazing for three days, four days. Yeah, uh, living there full <laughs> Don't time. Don't get now? used to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Living there full time. Good luck. Good luck with that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to chat about was uh, they're, re- they're remaking Charlie's Angels. Oh, I saw that. Why? The only redeeming quality would be that uh, what's her name, blonde that does the No Whammy show. Uh, oh, that she's directing. Elizabeth wrote, Banks wrote and directed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, she's a badass. Uh, but the cast. So I looked up the and cast. She always does pretty funny shit. Pitch Perfect. Like, yeah, she's, she's great. Good. Look, so Elizabeth Banks is the, the shit. The only thing I don't like is that little Twilight fucker. But yeah, Kristen Stewart's in it. Naomi Scott is in it, and then Ella Balasnica. Doesn't matter. Never no, heard of not her. Gonna, not gonna, not gonna see it. So it doesn't so, really matter, anyways. The in the in the trailer, the one thing. Kristen Stewart says one thing, Which and I is. just already hated it. Yeah, I'm not. A f- oh, she said, "Oh, uh, was that fun? Because it looked really, really fun." And I was just out. Yep. I was just done. I was out. And I can't do this one either. So, but I will. Like I said, Elizabeth thinks she's pretty. Everything she direct writes and directs is, has been pretty good. So she's been on fire. Yeah. Uh, this one though, I I don't I don't think it's gonna do well. Uh, I really it, don't. I, I just it looking they're at, younger. No, looking at this they're cast, like, I think it's, I think. Cause Charlie's angels isn't funny necessarily. So it doesn't no, need but to be they, funny. They had Drew Barrymore and they had, uh, uh, Diaz, Diaz and all those, and all those, Lou. yeah. And it, like, that was, it was a fun flirty little cast. None of these chicks have the same personalities as them that are that big and fun. Like Kristen Stewart looks like she's got that permanent <laughs> look on her face. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you cooked the burger wrong, where it's just like send it back, right? Uh, yeah, send it back. I don't even eat burgers anyway. Yeah, is this veg? Why'd you even full? bring me a burger? Yeah, yeah. So is it a beyond? I can't. Uh, I can't get into whole her whole shit. The other two, I really don't know that well. I'm gonna be realsies with you. Uh, it's just not the same crew to me, you know. Yeah, 
And um, when this show comes out, we will have seen yesterday. Yes. So we're going tomorrow night to see yesterday. So let's pretend it was awesome. Well, we'll see. I I'll, mean, we'll give you the full report come next week. On. It's got to be good, right? For those of you who, who missed that show when we were talking about, this is probably uh, our most anticipated movie of the summer, I would say. Besides Rocket Man, but yeah. Because the idea is genius. It's about a guy who wakes oh. up and the entire world has never heard of the group The Beatles. None of those songs exist, so he starts recording all of the Beatles songs and, becoming and becomes the most famous musician the in the world. We're going to see that tomorrow night, and uh, that one I'm amped about because I think the idea is genius. And it's Danny Boyle, any, right? It's Danny Boyle who yeah. directed it. I don't know anything about that cast whatsoever. Which is but awesome. The trailer That's is the way amazing. I like it. Yes, and the trailer is amazing, and, uh, and I'm amped about that. I like it if it's a good concept. I don't like it with Charlie's Angels when you have a, a couple of dum-dums in there that it's sure. like, hey, man. A couple You're of dum dums and a ding -a -ling. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the same as Ghostbusters. You're trying to replace ultra famous people that everybody loves with a couple of dum dums and some stick stick queens, you know? I don't even know what that means. We'll work on that one. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna workshop that. I don't <laughs> think that's all the way there yet. Um but yeah. Uh and then last but not least, uh, what I would uh, love to chat with you about is uh Mr. Yang last night on okay. the Democratic debate. A lot of people are hashtagging let Yang speak and they're complaining that he didn't get to, to talk enough last night at the debates. And uh, nobody got to talk enough except for Buttigieg. That chick, that Gillibrand. Oh, man. Well, that's the thing. You have to risk being unlikable, right? Because yes. every time she cut someone off, every time she interrupted, I just hated her a little bit more. So you have to risk that to get your point out. And he just didn't the thing is it's not let him speak it's you could see it these things like you really have to like i would never ever in a million years be able to do it no because i would be like oh, go ahead yep no go ahead uh, yeah oh yeah. is it my turn not my turn time's up okay like so uh you really have to get yourself out there because they have the three people they want to talk to if right. you want to talk you have to fucking interrupt you have to be a dick and the thing is, he just wasn't. So I, I don't, I don't know. They're saying they wouldn't let him talk, or he did not interject. He's got a big, he's got a weird online fan base, like a big online fan base. And again, because he's a smart guy, right. and his ideas are correct in the future. Um, I, again, he doesn't, he doesn't know anything about uh, foreign policy or any of that other shit. But um, I find it interesting that out of last night, no one is trending right now but except him. for him. So. Who knows? Um, yeah, I would like to hear a little more about what he's saying, but we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, Could you do it? Uh, run for president? The debate? Just that stage dealing with that? Man, I, I think my biggest problem would be... Uh, just only because you were so quick to say I couldn't. So I'm just wondering. No, because uh, I know you. You're too polite. <laughs> and I'm saying that in a, in a nice way. You're too polite where you don't want to butt in. I would probably butt in because I knew you had to. But then you, but then you then gotta you come off like an back, asshole. So yeah. I would probably come off like an asshole because you're trying to get your point across, or just be known. Like the Gillibrand chick, half of me is like, all right, she was trying to make a name for herself I know. because she probably wasn't gonna get to talk that much anyways. I know, but you but come off like, like an asshole, and that's probably what would have happened to me. I don't know who determines these things. I, it's a look. The, the DNC is privately financed, so they can do whatever they want. I mean, it's the same with like Facebook or YouTube yeah, or whatever exactly. else. So I don't know. Um, I, I, me personally, I'd probably come off like an asshole. And that would be strange for you. <laughs> uh, so what's up? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing now? <laughs> I don't think anyone would agree with that, Ross. Okay. So you just, no, you know, no one would agree with that. No, not at all. Um, now it's time to get to the revolutionary figure of the day. Shall we? We shall. Um, I want to, I want to throw this out because of, of what you're, you're doing. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to I want to give galas their due, right? Um, Who? Gals? Galas. Oh, galas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just want to just want to give galas sure. their due. Go ahead. The only gala that uh, that stops the world these days is the Met Gala. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that shuts down the internet for a good. I think the one I'm going to is going to kind of be rival that. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah. So we're going to give it to Eleanor Lambert, who uh, created the Met Gala. Okay. Uh, back in 1948, she was a publicist. And it was a, ra it was a way for people to raise money for the newly founded uh, Costume Institute. 
Ugh. And mark the opening of its annual it's exhibit. The right people that have money, huh? Ugh. Costume Institute. I don't even. I'm know. out there on the front lines for these kitties. <laughs> <laughs> and they're making costumes. I mean, and they're that? giving money to costumes. I didn't know what that was. I'm going to be honest, man. All these years, I had no idea what this was for. Me neither. I None. thought it was just like. I thought a they were party. raising money for like the city or something, or like that. the actual Met. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, but for yeah. the, the Costume Institute, huh? I'm sure it's part of the Met, but anyway, yeah. Yeah. yeah what kind of costumes? Halloween costumes? <laughs> no, there's Just like curious. a costume. Um, so in the museum, okay, there's the costume part of it. All right. And so you go to you go up the stairs, blah blah blah, and then you walk through all these crazy costumes that they make. That they make or like famous people born. I mean, obviously, famous or artists make. Okay. So that's the idea, and then you walk through and you see all these things and then you go sure, and drink sure, and sure, sure. Uh, hang out with they Rihanna. set a record this last year for how many millions they raised it's a good thing it's going to that and not like you know education cats and rodents cities, everywhere any, yep. yeah roads school systems whatever but that costume part um that's gonna we've really got to keep that going you yeah guys. If that shutters what what's gonna happen that to all sounds of us so fucking boring to me <laughs> To like you pretend, to that, would you go? I would go, but after the stairs, I would be like, do I have to walk through the fucking museum? Yeah, yeah I'd be yeah, like, yeah. can I just go right to the fucking table? No, you got to do all that stuff. No, so I'd have to pretend, oh, look, oh, <laughs> look at that. When was that made? Oh, gosh, what year? <laughs> I hate museums. Nobody loves a red carpet more than you. And nobody hates a museum more than me. So I don't know about the Met. You know what I mean? I don't know how that would shake out. I was the last one we went to? It was uh, two years ago, a year before? A museum? No, the red carpet premiere was for our last movie. What was that? Uh, not another war story. Yes. Yes. Did you say I love the red carpet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying that facetiously. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Mm-mm. <laughs> You look at you look at people and you're like, sweet. Because what they do for the audience at home is they write your name on a chalkboard. Oh yeah, like so a dry erase board, and they show it to the photographers before you go down the, mm -hmm. the thing, and they say, "Hey everybody, Jesse Wiseman's here, or yeah. whatever, right?" And then they shuffle you down. It's up to the photographers whether or not they want to take your picture. So you, as a human being, feel like shit. Okay, they so don't this has happened are. to me every time. Real quick, I've done one movie that was even anything that was big enough to do anything and won a, or was nominated for an Independent Spirit Award, which yeah, is yeah, like yeah. the big independent. Yeah. Like, that was it's the biggest deal. red carpet I've ever been deal, to, yeah. right? Yeah. And definitely got the treatment of, because we were this small indie film, we were there for the uh, Cassavetes Award. So it's anything under 500,000, which is like the smallest movie of all time. Right. Um, and so they held the name up, Jesse Lyman, and everyone just put their cameras down and waited and looked at their phones. So, and that's just kind of like a little bit about me, you know, oh, and where boy. I come from. But fuck it. I knew that was going to happen. And I uh, hung out with Lou Dil Diamond Phillips you did. and drank and yeah, it yeah. was fucking LDP. fun. <laughs> but uh there was that and and a version of that has happened to me on every carpet. So it's fine. You know, yeah. did I did I get picked to model their loss, right? <laughs> Cuz I would have fucking killed it. Yeah, you would have. Anyways, moving on, I'm going to have fun at the gala. Yeah, enjoy the gala tonight. Proud of you, Jabes. Thanks. Yeah, out there raising money. You know, I'm on the front lines for these kitties. Yeah, helping people out, so uh, know that you have the entire support of a nation and your family behind you. Thank you. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Subscribe on YouTube. Good night, everyone. Good night.